and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Early season fungicide use in corn has been growing across the country and the reason why is improving plant health and ultimately leading to more yield. We're going to talk about how to get the best return on investment, how to get the most yield gain on your early season corn fungicide applications. Well, when we talk about increasing yield in soybeans, one of the keys is obviously great weed control. And especially if you've got Roundup resistant weeds, you may be looking for some post-emerge tank mix partners on your farm this year. We'll talk through your options today. I don't think our weed of the week is necessarily Roundup resistant, but it's not easy to control. We'll show you how to stop it on your farm. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about the use of stream bars in wheat. The main purpose that we see farmers using stream bars in wheat fields for is to apply fertilizer during the crop season. Well, it's not just any kind of fertilizer though, it's liquid fertilizer and typically we're talking nitrogen. If a farmer was to, let's say, spray nitrogen over the top of his crop, like he would spray herbicide, the big problem with that is excessive leaf burn. So in order to apply a lot of fertilizer, yet keep the leaf burn down, that's why farmers use these stream bars. And basically the point is they're creating a stream of fertilizer. So yes, there will be some fertilizer that hits a little bit of the wheat, but most of the fertilizer is going to end up on the ground without hitting the wheat. And then you have just a tiny little bit of leaf burn. You get your fertilizer out there in season, which is what the farmer was after. It seems to be a pretty good alternative to some other methods of fertilizer application. When farmers are applying nitrogen, the reason why they're doing it in crop rather than all pre-plant is that the crop needs some nitrogen as the season goes on and it has a fairly high demand towards the end of the season. What farmers are seeing for a response in their wheat by putting the nitrogen on later is they're more efficient with the nitrogen and that nitrogen can go right to building protein levels in the wheat. Many farmers are seeing the protein levels increase by a percent or more in some cases. That makes the wheat more valuable to the processors and it also makes it more valuable for the farmers too. Well, the other big thing here is just from the environmental standpoint, as farmers, we're trying to do everything possible so the nitrogen ends up in the crop, not in the groundwater or anywhere else where we don't want it. So applying it near the time when that wheat actually needs the fertilizer, that's a great deal for the farmer, great deal for the environment. It also, like Darren said, means the farmer gets to use a little bit less nitrogen because he has less worry about loss of that nitrogen. So it's a good deal all the way around. Well, and for the farmer, he can be very precise because who knows if it's going to be a great crop year or a poor crop year. And if you have to put all the plant food out before you plant the crop, well, you're totally guessing what kind of year it's going to be. This way, by allowing the farmers or giving the farmers an option to put on that plant food later in the season, the farmer can look and say, you know what? It's not a good year. I'm not going to have a big yield. I'm not going to have a lot of wheat out there. I may not need any more fertilizer, even though I was planning on putting some out there. I can just scrap that plant. Or, hey, this is my best year ever, and I'm going to have way more yield than I ever dreamed I would have. So I'm going to need more plant food out there because those plants are trying to pull all their nutrition out of the soil, and there's just not enough there. To go along with these stream bars and the application of fertilizer through stream bars, a lot of farmers are putting in tram lines in their wheat fields so then they can drive in spots where there is no wheat planted and they don't have to run over an existing wheat crop. So typically farmers are using the stream bars to apply nitrogen and some other liquid fertilizers. They're doing it in tram lines. It's a much more efficient way to apply fertilizer. It's basically in effect a, what we would call a split application. So the farmer will put some nitrogen on early around planting time, the rest of it through these stream bars. It's a good way to go for a lot of farmers around the world. And you may say, wow, these stream bars look exciting. They're probably doing that in all crops. No, stream bars don't work for all crops, like corn, for example, when it has a great big whirl or kind of a funnel in the center of the plant. Stream barring can be quite dangerous because that corn plant with great big leaves could funnel all that fertilizer right into the whirl 
rather than letting it get down to the soil where it can get in through the roots and you could cause some plant injury. So this is mainly a, a process and, and a technology used in cereal crops. Well, unfortunately, our Weed of the Week is not limited to just cereal crops. We'll talk about how to control it coming up later in the show. Technology is constantly changing the way we farm. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies are here to keep your farm at the forefront of agricultural innovation. With spray application equipment for any scenario, Hypro is here to put you right on technology, right on target. At Fisher Tradition Farms, we verus all of our acres, and any new additional acres are automatically verused. Verus maps allow us to know exactly where our soil types change and how much they change. We use AgriLiquids Enhance High Energy N and Access that allows us to add sulfur. We can customize our AgriLiquid products on a per pound, per acre basis as needed. Compaction created during planting leaves thousands of dollars of potential yield in your fields. Copperhead Ag has developed the Furrow Cruiser Spiked Closing Wheel to close the seed trench more effectively. With a unique combination of closing power and control, the Furrow Cruiser provides earlier, more even emergence and higher stand counts, returning yield potential and putting profit back in your pocket. For more information on why you should never run a traditional closing system again, visit CopperheadAG.com. There are trillions of hardworking microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes, creating microscopic farmhands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season, protecting and maximizing your yield potential. We're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farmhands, ready for work. Nature, it's powerful technology. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing time. As weed resistance becomes more of a problem across the country, your crop protection program needs to stay flexible to be effective. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies wide selection of spray tips and nozzle configurations are available to keep your crop protection program right on technology, right on target. In corn, early season plant health is very important. Sometimes we see diseases striking early in the season. Sometimes that corn plant just needs a boost for the stress it's about to endure as it gets to the rapid growth phases. Either way, we're seeing a dramatic increase in usage of corn fungicides versus five or 10 years ago. All right, here's the problem though. We're not seeing a dramatic increase in yield when a farmer goes and sprays at V6 or V7. It's not a 50 bushel yield gain or anything like that. It's very common to have five, but you know what I say to a lot of guys is, are you really gonna see a three bushel or a five bushel gain show up in your yield monitor? Most of the time not. I would challenge you, look at your yield maps from last fall. Most of the time your yield breaks are eight bushels, 10 bushels, 12 bushels, something like that for a different color on your map. Whenever you're gonna do any of these things that give you a smaller bushel gain, you really have to look close to make sure you find those in the fall so you can determine whether or not it pays. Fungicide prices have come down dramatically in the last two years, plus the fact in drier areas of the country like where we're at, we're using a half rate. Costs four bucks and I get a $17.50 return. I'm absolutely doing that. Even if I get a three bushel gain, I've more than doubled my money. If we can find these little yield gains where we only have to spend $4 or $6, that sounds like something I'm pretty interested in. And you may say, well, hold on, you're forgetting the application charge. I, I get it, at tasseling time, you may May have to hire an airplane or somebody that has a Hagee or, or a big machine that can go through that you don't own. Uh, yes, that adds additional cost, but this early season application is one you can make yourself with your regular sprayer. You could also be doing it at the same time as something else. Let's say that you're going out to spray at V6. You certainly could mix a fungicide in with those applications so it won't require you to make an extra application across the field. Here's the other thing. As soon as I start talking about half rates, you're probably thinking, hey, wait a second, don't you guys talk about disease resistance? Yes. <laughs> 
A few years ago, I was at a, at a meeting listening to a BSF rep talking about three applications of headline in corn. He said, we're putting headline in furrow, we're spraying it early post, and we're spraying it tassel time. And I said the same thing. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're going to kill headline. And he goes, no, you don't get it. This is in North Dakota where I don't ha even have disease. This is plant health. And he said, you can't build resistance to plant health. And I said, huh, I really never thought about it that way. But in effect, that's what we're trying to do here at this V6. How much disease do you really see in your corn plant at V6? Probably none uh, or very little, okay? So are we really worried about disease resistance at that point? No. Now, a tassel, that's a whole different deal, all right? Or even a couple weeks before tassel or R1 or R2. Yeah, there are, there's lots of disease in the crop at that point. But this early application, if we're just talking about plant health, then I won't get too worried about it. Okay, we've got a disease-free environment. Let's look at the best timing for our crop. We really like to target on our farm V6 to V7. Now you'll hear people say, well, this is the V4 or V5 fungicide application, and you certainly could do it at those times. We've seen better gains though, waiting until V6 or V7. There's a couple of things going on here. Once we hit about V8, we hit that rapid growth phase where corn seems to go from knee high to shoulder high overnight. So as you're going into that rapid growth, having great plant health is very important. The other side of it is, Think about what is the difference between, say, V7 corn and V4 corn. Well, we've got three more fully developed leaf collars. So not only do you have seven fully developed leaf collars at V7, you probably have the eighth leaf and the ninth leaf, maybe even the tenth leaf starting to poke out. Now, all of a sudden, we're about up to the ear leaf. And if we can protect that corn plant all the way up to the ear leaf, and you think about what those leaves are doing, catching sunlight energy to feed our ear, this is where you've got the optimum chance to gain yield. All right, you're probably wondering, well, which fungicide works best in this application? Uh, the big thing whenever we talk about plant health is the strobilurine or strobilurine chemical family. The main strobe that's out there is Headline, but there are others like Evito and Quadris Equation, or you can use combination products that would contain another mode of action, something like Preaxor or Fortix. We've used all those with success it doesn't seem to make as much difference which product you use as long as you have a product that contains a strobe. The big thing is just spray at that timing. Give it a shot on your farm. We talked about earlier spraying with some of the different broadleaf tank mix partners. Let's say that you're going to mix this with Roundup. All of a sudden we got some problems here. Whenever we're going to spray a fungicide at the same time as Roundup, we want great coverage. We want small droplets uh, and lots of them. With Roundup, chances are you're looking for big droplets to avoid having drift issues. So uh, it's one of those decisions you're going to have to make on your farm. Hey, maybe I make two passes if I have to use something with great big droplets. Not everything is always compatible. You know, outside of that Roundup and the drift component, if you're just spraying a broadleaf herbicide, oftentimes this late in the season it ends up being an HPPD uh, and those are for the most part safe to mix with the fungicides. Or if you had an insect outbreak in the field that you had to mix uh, a pyrethroid insecticide in there, you certainly could do those with the fungicides in most cases. Well, once again, we do think it's a good idea to at least be trying some fungicide at around that V6 or V7 timing on your farm. Consider trying a half rate on some of your acres and make sure you're monitoring real closely this fall for good yield results. Well, the other thing you've got to monitor really all season long is our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less berming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Farmers' attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know.
Being a farmer means securing your land and livelihood for the future. Harvest Solutions from Capello USA have the grit to get you there. Our product lines for corn, sunflowers, and forage are designed for efficiency and longevity, preventing harvest loss while minimizing maintenance and downtime. To do everything you can to advance your farmland to the next generation, call us at 855-CAPELLO or visit us at capellousa.com. Capello USA, Italian craftsmanship, American grit. There are trillions of hardworking microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes, creating microscopic farmhands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season, protecting and maximizing your yield potential. We're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farmhands, ready for work. Nature, it's powerful technology. The experience from the salesman to the building crew all the way through was just pleasant and professional. I feel that the people at Morton are my friends. I'll do anything for them because I felt they met that with me. I wouldn't have anybody build me a building other than Morton. I wouldn't even consider anybody else. It pays to go look around, but by far Morton's got the best building and we're just so pleased with it. Contact Morton Buildings today during our Building Value Day sales event. Find the building of your dreams at mortonbuildings.com. Over the last few years, a lot of farmers around the country have had issues with Roundup-resistant weeds in soybeans. We talk so much about use a good pre-emerge herbicide, that's the best way to go. But let's face it, you're probably going to have some weeds that come up post-emerge. How are you going to control those? Usually you're going to have Roundup in the tank. What can be used as a tank mix partner? I was just thinking for the double crop soybean guys that are saying, man, I'm going to start planting beans here pretty quick. You might get a little scared today when you hear what the options are and how much they cost post-emerge. That's the thing well, that scares me. Yeah, but Darren, we do have some cheap options. Uh, let's look at Flexstar, generic Flexstar. Uh, if you, let's it's, say, use 12 ounces to the acre like you do in some areas of the country, it's four bucks or less. All right, that, that one that is bad. cheap, but you can only use it once. Hey. So you say, well, I got my first yep. flush and That's wow, true. it's two weeks after planting, I get a spray Flexstar. Okay. Now what do I do two okay, or three weeks all right, but let's just start there. Flexstar is the best thing on water hemp post-emerge or Palmer pigweed. So if you've got Roundup resistant water hemp, we would tell you Flexstar. Uh, the active ingredient is Femesifen. So you may have heard Femesifen or one of those generics. All right, so I said that one is cheap. I got another one that's cheap for you, Darren, and that's the old pinnacle. It's now called Harass. It's more concentrated, and that's the very best thing post-emergent lamb's quarters. Just lamb's quarters, but still, if that's what you had, <laughs> then, well, then that's here, the way to go, and it's a dollar an acre. And it's a dollar an acre. And honestly, that's here's it. the challenge with post-emerge soybean broadleaf control is, well, this product works on uh, this one or two weeds. <laughs> right. This product works on this one or two weeds. And you know, what do you really have? It comes down to scouting and you have to be really diligent looking across your field. You say, wow, I've got lots of weeds out in my field, but 80% of them are water hemp. 15% of them are ragweed. The other five are kind of a mix of different things. So if I can get the water hemp and the ragweed, that would be the big ones for me. Right. Always start with what's my worst problem. That's what I want to get under control. That's why we talk so much about Flexstar. Now, Harass isn't going to do anything for you on water hemp or Palmer pigweed because it's resistant, chances are, to the ALS chemistry or that SU chemistry that the harass is. So what are you going to use? It's probably going to be Cadet or Cobra. And that's where Darren mentions the price factor. You're going to spend in the range of 10 to $20 an acre here. Um, yeah, that's not a lot of fun to have to go spend 20 bucks and do a halfway decent job, not a perfect job of control well, later on. And honestly, this uh, this year, a lot of guys were talking to me about, you know what, I don't know, I got to make some cuts here and there. And I said, well, don't cut your pre's out of soybeans. That, that's going to save you money. The guys like, what? You're talking about spending maybe 15 bucks, maybe 20 bucks, depending on which combination of pre's I choose. What are you talking about? It's going to save me money. And then I just remind them, well, hey, here's what Cobra costs post-emerge. And it's not going to be perfect on your pigweed but we can use some of these pre-products and do a really good job. So here we are. If you've already got the beans in the ground and you didn't get the pre on or you only used one pre instead of a combination of three like we talk about all the time on the show. All right, now you have to spray the Cobra. How do you make this stuff work? All right, now the big key is, and I don't care if we're talking Cobra or any of these products, you have to spray when the weeds are small, which means you've got to be scouting your fields. And if you still think, oh, I don't have Roundup resistant weeds, so you're going out spraying just Roundup. Well, guess what's going to happen sooner or later when you get those resistant 
resistant weeds. You've sprayed Roundup, you go up back out a week or two later and you go, uh-oh, the Roundup didn't work and now my weeds are eight inches tall. Guess what's labeled for that? Not a single product, nothing. So that's our big concern here and that's why we talk so much about Pre's. We've well, got well, the weed height is one thing, Brian. The yep. other thing that you should mention is the additives. When we're talking sure. about these products, a lot of times your ag retailer will say, hey, we really need crop oil or methylated seed oil to make this product but then work you're like going to say, oh, example. it's going to add more leaf burn. And he's going to say, well, yep, here's your choice. Either weed kill and some leaf burn or not much leaf burn and not much weed kill. That's exactly <laughs> right. There's no way around that. There's no way yep. around that. You're going to have to, to make things a little bit hotter if you want them to work well. Now, uh, if you're planting Liberty Link soybeans, you say, well, hey, I planted Liberty Link soybeans. I can use Liberty. That's fine. But you know what? If you just use Liberty and that's all you use over and over and over again, we're going to be in the same boat that we're in with Roundup really quickly. So many guys are tank mixing some of these options with Liberty and they get hot because Liberty's got a pretty hot surfactant package in it to begin with. All right, we got about 30 seconds, Darren. Rapid fire. Let's talk about weeds. Wild buckwheat, post-emerge. Pursuit or Raptor? Okay, how about mare's tail? I like first rate the best. Uh, common ragweed? Definitely first rate as long as it's not ALS resistant ragweed. Giant ragweed. Same thing. Velvet leaf. How about velvet leaf? Well, Cadet and Resource do an excellent job up to 36 inch tall velvet leaf, but please don't let it get that tall because it's going to rob a lot of yield by that Okay, point. and once again, the most important weed, either water hemp or palm pigweed, same control? Well, we want to use Flexstar. We can only use it one time, and it has a 10 month rotational window to planting corn, so you need to use it early in the season on your first pass. On the second pass coming through for pigweed, your best option, in my opinion, is Cobra. Some guys will like Cadet as well. Well, we'll find out if any of these will control our Weed of the Week. It's coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Our Weed of the Week is Marsh Aster. This is kind of a tough one because sometimes it's an annual, but usually it's a perennial weed. <laughs> the other thing that's tough about it is we normally don't see it in cultivated fields. So if you're out planting corn or soybeans, uh, e even in the no-till, we don't really see Marsh Aster. I think that's a great cre thing. <laughs> creeping in very often. So so you're just probably not, hey, I, I've seen that maybe over here in that meadow or over there in that ditch, but I, I haven't seen it out in my field, so I didn't pay much attention to it. And it is kind of a pretty weed. It's in the sunflower family so it's got little flowers on it however if it's out in your pasture and you're trying to get either hay or you're trying to get just grass growing for your livestock this one can definitely rob uh, your grass's power so whenever you see about a pound of marsh aster in the pasture you're probably giving up at least two pounds of grass production from that acre so you want to get it under control now the dicamba type products have been pretty good as Brian mentioned, it's normally a perennial, so we're not going to get completely down through that root system, but it's not the toughest, most invasive weed you're going to find. Yeah, but here's one of the things I really like, Darren, with these new Roundup 2 Extend beans, they're tolerant to dicamba. So if you have, let's say, a ditch or a pasture that's right next to a field of soybeans, if you had Extend beans, now we don't have to worry about that off-target movement. Because let's face it, as I drive around the country, I see a lot of weeds in fence lines, ditches, and pastures. Well, now we can solve that problem and you know dicamba is really good on marsh aster and a number of other weeds out there so I think that's a great option. All right the other thing is out in pastures and non-crop land if you can use tordon if you're away from water and you're away from trees Tordon has been a pretty effective product on marsh aster control. But here's the problem with Tordon, it lasts for a really long time in the soil. Let's say that we want to put crops in there three years from now or five years from now and you just sprayed a pint or maybe a quart of Tordon out there, well guess what? That might last 10, 12 years in the soil. Now you are not going to get killing power on marsh aster for 10 years out of Tordon, but it might ding it up a little bit and it certainly might ding up a future broadleaf crop if you planted that there. Okay, here's the last thing with marsh 
marsh aster, it prefers wet soils. That's where it's going to compete most favorably. So normally we'll see it in the low lying grounds. If it does happen to make it out into a field, improving drainage is generally the best control method long term. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week marsh aster, but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. Apply gypsoil on your farm to add cost-effective sulfur to soils and improve soil structure. Gypsoil increases calcium and helps flush excess magnesium in tight soils, improve air and water infiltration, and reduce problem wet spots and crusting. Better soil quality means better water quality, so gypsoil is good for the environment too. For more information about putting gypsoil to work on your farm, call 866-GYPSOIL or 497-7645. Visit online at gypsoil.com. Take a look inside any rotary combine and you'll find single rotor technology. Technology Case IH introduced over 35 years ago with the Axial Flow Combine. But unless it gives you more bells and whistles with fewer belts and chains, more power using less fuel, it's not an Axial Flow. Because while the heart of every rotary combine beats red, only Case IH gives you the power to do more. Uh, we have a school and a church nearby. I actually go to the classroom to educate the students about what's going on here on my farm. The system that I have, I tie everything together. No-till, cover crops. We applied AgriLiquid in furrow with our soybeans this year. It seemed like they jumped out of the soil, even though we had the record rainfall. I really feel that I'm feeding my plant on a consistent year-round basis throughout the growing season. Ever wonder if you are over drying or spoiling your grain when you turn on the fans? Do you worry about the condition of your grain all winter long? Are you able to see what is happening in your bins? AgriDry will give you peace of mind with our 24-hour monitoring system. View real-time grain bin data online from a web-enabled device. AD Link will send you alerts when sensors are triggered by potential grain problems. Stop worrying and start storing quality grain with AgriDry. Visit agridryllc.com today. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. When conditions are fit and the timing is right, you've got to be ready to go in the field. So on the next rainy day, be prepared to get as much done as you can. Here's a short list of things you may consider doing in today's Iron Talk. Take any data you've collected during planting, spraying, or fertilizing and get that off your machines as appropriate and save it for future use. Also, get any plans uploaded on your equipment for the work you'll be doing once conditions are fit. Make sure you have seed, fertilizer, crop protection, all those things on hand and ready to go. Don't load up your sprayer until you're ready to go to the field to avoid settling out a product the activation of product or contamination from other products you sprayed in the past that could be stuck in pores in the tank. Make sure you clean your equipment very well and oftentimes maintenance issues become obvious. Oil leaks, rusty patches that need touch-up paint and other things will save time and money down the road. Finally maintenance, grease and lube, changing oil, filters and fluids, adjusting air pressure in tires, ballasting for maximum efficiency, all the thankless jobs you'll appreciate later when you're not broken down far from home. So spend your rainy days wisely to maximize work time and your free time the rest of the growing season. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a Quick Till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. 
That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. You'll find us each weekday at 2 p.m. Central on Sirius XM channel 147. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. While the population of our planet grows each year, the amount of farmland we have to grow food for everyone becomes less. According to the USDA, farmers will need to produce as much food in the next 40 years as they have in the last 500. To learn more, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org. <laughs>